Welcome to Creative Living with Jamie. I'm your guide, Jamie Riddler, and on this podcast, you and I are going to go on a great many adventures together. We'll explore all aspects of what it means to live a creative life, and we'll embrace ourselves as artists. We'll get curious, we'll wonder, and we'll follow inspiration. We'll wrestle with tough questions and we'll brave challenges. And sometimes we'll ask our friends for help. Along the way, we'll discover our courage, our confidence, ourselves, and one another. We'll come to know our artistic hearts, and from there we will create. And that's when the magic Hey, everybody. Welcome to Creative Living with Jamie. I'm your host, Jamie. And today I have a special guest today. Hey, Shannon. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> oh, see you what? Hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> this is the season finale for the fall season of the podcast. We're doing it on video two just to get fancy. So you can check it out on creativelivingtv.ca or you can listen to it in your regular podcast stream. Uh, and so we started this tradition, I, I, well, I never remember how many times ago, it might be once, but in our family, especially with me and Shannon, we have this yes. rule, if we do it twice and we like it, it's a tradition. <laughs> we have lots of traditions now. <laughs> we have lots Some of traditions. need a sabbatical, but we don't care. We just keep them in. Just pile them on. More traditions, more traditions. <laughs> So the tradition here for the podcast now is for Shannon and I to do it together, which is so exciting because, you know, Shannon's been a part of the podcast since the very beginning, just about. Close. Just Close. About. I, yeah, I didn't, I, I, we, I don't think I, I didn't edit it right away, but pretty soon. But definitely, I think that's like when I really, really didn't know what I was doing, then I was doing it on my own, and then I got wise and said, "So, Shannon." <laughs> <laughs> and I had really wanted to get into podcasting. I think that was before. Um, I think we went through some tutorials together, and then, um, and I got, and then I ended up having one, two, three more. Who knows? At some point, <laughs> lots of podcasts. <laughs> so, Podcasting's fun. It is. <laughs> So thanks for um, being here live with me today. We're going to just do a little bit of a, I don't know, a chit chat about all things Creative Living with Jamie. And um, we hope that it will be celebratory. Uh, We hope that you will enjoy it. (laughs) And we're so glad to hang out with you. It's like really my favorite thing about the podcast. And, uh, you know, the podcast has seen some changes this year. One of the reasons is I just, I love this feeling of hanging out. And so I really hope that it feels like that. So grab your cup of hot chocolate, your cup of tea, your cup, what Shannon calls your hot liquid beverage of choice. Grab your cat or your puppy, settle in and uh, hang out with us. We're so glad you're here. This is going to be so much fun. Yay. So Shannon's got some questions for me. She's going to put me in the hot seat. (laughs) Woohoo! This is awesome. I like this part. <laughs> yeah, because like so much has happened this season and we've already, it feels like fall has come and almost gone so quickly. But totally. so, but what was fall 2007 like for you, Jamie? 2017. Uh, yeah, because I'm not going to make you, I can't, 2000, I actually think I remember fall 2007 better than fall 2017. <laughs> Because I was blogging more, but anyway. You know, I would have absolutely no idea what <laughs> was going on. I just date me. This is where we differ. Yeah, this so, is where we totally differ. Okay, 2017, let's live in the now. How was your fall? You know what? This was a very different season for me. Um, I really consciously decided to step back from some things and take less onto my schedule for a couple of reasons. We had, we were doing some traveling to California in the early fall. And also I was taking, um, Susan Piver's, uh, meditation instructor training. And I knew that that would be demanding. And so I just scaled back a little and, I was thinking today about looking back on planning day last year. I don't know if you remember, Shannon, you probably do, that I picked a picture that just shocked me, just just really Mm. rocked my world. And, you know, that makes it sound like it was something extravagant, like rebellious or something. But no, that would be kind of normal. It was like (laughs) this peaceful, graceful woman walking out into the water, sun shining. It just sort of said ease. 
ease. Mm. And it made me really think, and it made me try to bring more of that into my life. And in some ways that's been good, but in some ways it's been weird. I felt a little discombobulated this season. Um, having less on. I didn't really have less on. I had different and maybe a little bit less on. I just, I don't know how I feel. I'm still assessing <laughs> how I feel about it. But I think that's the trick is to try things and feel like what's working for you. Um, too little going on or too much, too many things that don't have a deadline or um, a live date. Uh, then I get a little mushy, you know, it just gets a little, mm, I'm making a hand gesture. So you can't hear that on the podcast. It gets like a little soft, a little like melting jelly. And then, you know, a little too much and it's like hard and staticky. And uh, so trying to find that right place where I, I love the example, uh, Kim LeClaire referred to this a lot with me saying, you know, it's like the river in the riverbed, like having the strong enough riverbed that the river's flowing right. at a good pace at where it's going, but healthily and lively. Um, I, I'm, that's the constant search here at Jamie Riddler Studios. <laughs> that's funny. With all the, the, all the jelly references, I thought we were going to get some like, like, I don't know, like some kind of donut. I don't know, some kind of food like answer. <laughs> You'd be like, Susie was here. <laughs> hey, Susie. Hey, Susie. Uh, but I should say that, you know, the uh, meditation instructor training with uh, Susan Piver and also Jenna Hollenstein was really great. Like, really filled my season with practice, mm -hmm. you know, and with thoughtfulness um, and study. Uh, mm. and that was great. And I can say that everybody in the program was very committed. We all showed up very earnestly, I would say, and really put ourselves into it. And that was, that was a good experience for me. Mm -hmm. And it was quite an intensive class. Like not only was it intensive, it was pretty intense. Yes. It was like two times a week. Uh, and it's funny because it, it's not like, um, I don't know how to describe what it was like, that it was demanding in the sense, I think that we, when you show up with commitment, everything can become demanding. Uh, and, you know, feeling like a student, again, to a teacher who I admire deeply uh, about a subject that is important and that has a long tradition, you kind of want to show up in a way that's very respectful. And in the first little while, I got really tight about it and really like, uh, I found it stressful. And then I thought that is really not the best mental energy for learning. I don't know, maybe for some people it perks them up and gets them focused. But for me, it kind of shuts me down if I'm worrying about, here's my air quotes, performing in the negative sense of the word, you know, um, right. and instead of just learning and absorbing and growing and deepening my wisdom and deepening my knowledge. And so somewhere through that term, I, I decided I was just going to say, you know what, if I fail, I fail. That's fine. The most important thing is I learned that I sink into the material and I did and I loved it and I did pass. <laughs> Congratulations. Yay. So that's something to celebrate this season. I Yay. have now passed meditation instructor training. That's wonderful. Sounds like you found your riverbed there. I did find my riverbed with that. I did. Awesome. Thanks for that's that. Awesome. Yeah. I like that metaphor. Uh, so what was, it sounds like there's lots of like energy and intensity there. What was the energy like this season for you? Well, that's interesting. I felt like, you know, one of the things I do all the time, I certainly, I do it every day. I do it before the podcast. I do it before the BTS is I'm just paying attention to the energy, like paying attention to my energy and what's going on inside me, but also sort of perking up my sensitivity ears and so I'm paying attention to what are the through lines uh, that I hear from my clients, uh, that I hear in comments, that I hear on Facebook, that I hear in Journal Club, you know, what are the trends? And it seemed to me that the fall of this year has been intense uh, mm -hmm. all around and also intensely transformative. And some of us sort of going kicking and screaming into the transformation that's showing up. Lots of big change, change without knowing exactly what's going to be next, a change that's 
maybe beyond your control. Um, but it doesn't feel like surface changes. It feels like it, when I look around that there's something in the ethers that say that the roots are moving mm -hmm. and things are changing for people. So this mm. has been a very powerful time to be in community. I think it's been a powerful time to be in journal club. Uh, it's been a powerful time to have good friend talks um, and sort of hold each other up as we go through whatever this is that seems to be happening. Have you noticed that too, Shannon? Do you feel like there's lots of change around? I do feel like there's lots of change. I like, I, I think there is like, I, I find for, for me, I feel like it's more like been a realization, like as opposed to, um, like a clarity piece is a like, you know, oh yeah, people say that all the time. And that's like, oh, oh, <laughs> say that because it's true. And now I feel it with some things. Um, right. And actually the piece about like change not necessarily being in your control. And I think we underestimate how often that is. And, you know, a lot of um, how so much isn't in our control. And I feel, I feel more comfortable now, slightly, no one throw things at me. <laughs> tomatoes are like you know to do's um <laughs> like um that it shouldn't be in your control if you control everything there's no that's not very interesting you know I'm i you 100 percent. i didn't used to believe that now i feel that i feel uh, that and it's not fair it's not fair you're actually you know especially if you're working in any kind of community it means you're taking choice away from everybody else and that doesn't feel good. Wow. So that's just that's sort of a powerful perspective, Shannon. That's a powerful insight. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I was very I was very happy when I realized that one. And I think I realized it like maybe even over a year ago. And then this year I really started to feel it and, and express it to other people as well. So that was that's a big change for me. I'm usually like, it must be this way, this way, no change, no flexibility. Flexibility means you flip to me <laughs> like, no it's not it's not really <laughs> the most welcoming environment <laughs> oh my i think it's just fascinating though and and it's and you're pointing out too that um change can be something external or yes. change can be something internal yes you know and so people may it may look like for whatever reason uh things outside may look like they're staying still to everyone else but inside mm -hmm. you're roiling with whatever else is coming next and yeah that can be an unnerving time too yeah so I, I yeah this is a good time for when things are changing i know that everybody says and also i'm going to say it too that's a good time for self-care mm -hmm. um it's a good time to try to be present mm -hmm. with what is like it's hard when change is coming up and you don't like it or you don't want it um and we can resist it a lot i do too um but that tends to just not help <laughs> <laughs> and change is inevitable so and change is inevitable you might as well get like get as comfortable as you can with it you know yeah. like that's and that's an, for me i've also sort of realized that as a sort of even as a confidence piece the, the less you are willing to change, I don't mean like change your values or something like that, but right. like the less you're willing to adapt or try things, the smaller your world becomes. And also the more resistance you're going to have to everything. Yes. Because it, w things will change. Things will change. It's, it is inevitable. And I think that's really one of the truths. So the more, whatever the way you can handle it, the more you flex that muscle, the better it is. It's just when you see flex that muscle, like I just have in my mind doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I have in my mind doing like these two different experiments. You know, mm. one is going through the day, getting annoyed at everything that isn't exactly how you want it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what? It's raining out today. Grumble, 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 grumble. Hey, this person in front of me is walking too slow. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Hey, yeah. this person behind me in the elevator escalator is moving too fast. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Like going, spending the whole day like that. And then the next day, you know, um, trying to experiment with being curious or open or delightfully surprised. Yeah. Anything that isn't going your way. Oh, it's raining. Oh, that everybody's I get to choose a new outfit. Yes, exactly. 
I get to wear my rubber boots. Yes. <laughs> You know, oh, this guy is walking too slow in front of me. Well, maybe that's an opportunity for me to slow down too. What happens yeah. when I slow down? So mm -hmm. I wonder, like, it, your day and your life will change depending on how you choose to react to. Now, I, I want to just make a little caveat there that everybody always says you can choose, you can choose. It is a lot of work, uh, personal work, to have the awareness and the discernment of choice. Mm -hmm. you know and there are lots of things in the life that it is very i don't want to be simplistic about that there are mm -hmm. things that happen in life that it is very difficult to say i'm just going to take i'm going to turn that lemon into lemonade yeah. uh there's time you should feel your real feelings yeah you know you should feel your real feelings um but I think that that spirit of openness and curiosity and a little bit of flexibility may allow you to have more positive feelings than grumble, grumble, grumble. Yeah. And it's true. I think it's true. And I think it's like the, the, some days are like that. Some days you, you, you're not going to put on a smile and just make it all okay. Like, and, and yeah. that's fine. I've, I've spent days, months, years like that, you know, but you know, at some point it's like, is that, is that helping you? You know, it might be, it might be protecting you because you're, you're feeling really vulnerable and, and you know, but maybe sure. later, you can work towards feeling a little more open and stuff. So, but yeah, so I can be, I can be a grumbler. Can be a grumbler. Not, ain't gonna lie about that. Ain't gonna lie, it just depends on the day. <laughs> oh my God. Speaking of days, we had awesome time on Fridays this month in journal club. Oh my gosh. How did the season go for journal club? Oh my gosh. I can't journal club has just become a part of Jamie Riddler studios. And mm -hmm. it's funny, like the BTS has too. And both of those things really just came out of a spontaneous idea. Like, huh, wouldn't it be interesting if, you know, mm -hmm. let's try this out and see. And journal club this season, um, everybody, we pick a medicine card each season and that card becomes our guide it's a, it will be an animal guide and this season we picked blue heron and the message of blue heron was know yourself sort of like an unflinching look at who you are there's a theme a little bit here today about being mm. the truth you know and um what that guided a lot of what we did throughout the season in journal club and what a joy what a joy to all get to know ourselves better but also in journal club we share uh, whatever we choose to, you never have to share anything in journal club. Journals are private, but sometimes it's really wonderful to have something come up for you and have the opportunity to say it out loud in front of other kind, generous, loving, fun people. And, um, and that was certainly the case. Sometimes when we would do an exercise and people would just say, I am this, I am this, I'm in this, like the power of an I am statement coming from somebody is enormous. We underestimate this and avoid it a lot. We feel like we're not allowed to say, hey, I am powerful or I am fun. I am smart. I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. I am sacred. I am wise. But when we say those things, it, what we see in Journal Club is it just ripples Everyone's always like, <gasps> talk about transformation. <laughs> yeah. And I think also, too, what I love is that. You know, one of the things I believe about a studio circle, a studio space, is that it can be anything and that it runs the full gamut of life, that we bring all the colors of ourselves, our life, our emotional palette, our intellectual ideas, everything has a home in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you see in Journal Club too, is that sometimes, sometimes we are laughing and silly and goofy. And then sometimes there's this whole hour that's this awe of sacredness and then sometimes it's raw and tears and sadness and because we get a chance to be human once a week yeah. and I just I just love that about journal club so it it is here to stay we'll have another journal club this winter I already missed all of you journal clubbers and those of you for whom that sounds really good I really I hope you'll join us because we have a wonderful time and this is a beautiful community. It's mm -hmm. just a really positive, loving, open, real group of people. It's been really awesome. I can't, I, I, it's true. I can't believe it's like, there's no journal club this week. It's like, what? I know. What we went to with my Friday. What? <laughs> <laughs> but it will be.
be back again soon. So yes. very, very exciting. Um, well, I also was wondering, because we talked a little bit about what's been going on in the studio, I was wondering what's been going on in your studio. What have you been creating this season? Oh, my goodness. If you want to share. I do. Um, it's so interesting. And thank you for asking that question, because sometimes I forget. I'm so glad we do start the show that we do with our other sister, Susie, because mm. it makes me take the time to acknowledge my own creative practice, my own creative work, instead of just, I channel so much of my creative heart into the studio, into the podcast, into the, you know, so it's good. And um, this season I did, I had actually a huge breakthrough. And those of you who are watching uh, on video, you can see the breakthroughs over my shoulders. And if you watch Start, you will have seen them too, which was, um, I made some paintings that really came out of my heart. And for the first time, were paintings that I made that feel, felt like me. Like felt like not, um, I mean, I've done things where I've seen glimpses. Everything comes out of your own hand, it is you. You know, yeah. but you do classes and you're sort of following the, the structure of the exercise or you're using a certain palette or a certain subject. And um, these paintings came out of taking Pixie Light Horse's uh, visual quest and so it's a very intuitive process. It's a process of discovery, which of course I love. And it's very connected to spirit, which I love. And it's very connected to animal guides, which I love. And so no wonder what came out of me was, was work that felt like my colors, my motif, my hands, my archetypal imagination. And that was very exciting to me. And I'll tell you, I cannot wait to get back to doing more painting. I feel that that is something I'm going to do over the holidays because it was super good for me and I loved it. That's so exciting. I love those paintings, Jamie. Thank I absolutely you. love them. They are so beautiful and wondrous and you know, you're always like, what's this? What's, what's that? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you so there. much. So it's been really wonderful to see. Uh, talk about and also talk about intense and creative we had a, an amazing full moon over this past weekend did you do anything to celebrate the full cold moon i did i feel like there was a few things that happened under that moon first of all i was obsessed with her <laughs> i don't know as soon as i saw her out my window shannon i texted you right away i'm like look out your window look at the window you're, you're the moon is unbelievable and she was just so exquisitely beautiful and then in the morning of the full moon day um it was misty here in mm -hmm. toronto and i woke up early as i do and i looked out and i was like whoa that is so like it's so beautiful out it is mysterious and beautiful and gentle and i got really despite the fact that i'm incredibly busy getting the academy ready i was like i'm not going to miss this moment i grabbed my camera and i went out and i just went for a walk through the mist and took pictures. And I, you know, it, that was new for me. I didn't really know the settings of my camera for that, but it does that. Dive in, dive in. <laughs> I did. And, uh, and that was really exciting. And I also, of course, I made a dream board um, under the full cold moon and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cold, moon. cold moon. I looked it up. Yes, it <laughs> so, is. So the cold question cold would be right. <laughs> And I just had the best time because also too, the message behind the full cold moon is really about what comforts do you dream of? What dreams feel like home? And so for me in the midst of all this busyness to grab some magazines, sit on my couch with a big cup of tea and make a dream board with the kittens around sleeping. I, heavenly. That sounds heavenly. So it was a great in. celebration this full moon. I think she was a powerful one this and really like made herself known like i felt even in the late days leading up to it you know it very very beautiful moon beautiful skies just there's an intensity and i actually did not put that two and two together that the day that you went out with your camera was right was right during the full moon i did not i did not put that together was, and i did wow that so was beautiful. just amazing and i really wonder too that um you know we're speaking about like this feeling of change that people are going through in the full moon and in the beginning, the first season of next year, we're going to have two full blue moons. And so we have no full moon in February. So no yeah. full snow moon, which is just so weird. Yeah. And, but at the end of January and at the end of March, we have two blue moons. I got to think that that means we're in for some 
surprises, hopefully good ones, knock on wood. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> and some change. Yeah. If, if people don't know what the blue moon is, it's when the full moon happens twice in a month. So the second full moon is a blue moon. I've never seen that twice in a year. Never. It's not that I can you, oh, it once in a year is rare enough. It does not, it certainly does not happen every year. It didn't happen this year. No. So, wow. That moon. That moon. Mm. Uh, so what's been keeping you busy this season? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> lots of things. Um, you know, in the studio, the big, big project is the studio yearbook. And mm -hmm. I am so excited about, for those of you, who are, again, who are watching, this is mine. It's getting very full. This is my um, fall yearbook. And uh, this last year, it, in the winter, it poured out of me. It just woke me up at five o'clock in the morning and would not let me go back to sleep. I put coffee on. I sat at my kitchen table and I just made it. I just made it on paper by hand and I didn't think at all. I was just like, this is what it wants to be. Oh, and this. And this, oh, and it needs to have this and this. And in fact, I made my dream board in the, this, uh, again, for those of you watching. Oh, wow. So my dream board, actually, there's a space for your dream boards in the yearbook. Uh, and mine mm. has like a woman hard at work in a beautiful space. It's got a sort of downtown scene. It's got a group of colorful people. It's got a clock and some paintings. Uh, and mm. it's such a, a compact way to make a powerful dream board. And because it sits in your yearbook, then you will always have it. No, these were my dreams in that season. And I just love that. So we are working hard on it, man. It has been a challenge because it's a tangible product. Mm -hmm. And so we are working with printers and, you know, we've had an alpha team, we've had a beta team and we really are, are this close. I had hoped to be able to launch it this winter, but there's still some things that have to be worked out. I think in the long run, that's going to be good. It's going to be an even better container for people's magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we will be launching in the spring of next year. It's a fun project. I love it. I hope people are wildly excited about it. And I hope that it becomes a, a really great companion to people in their studios. It's certainly a great companion to me. It's such a wonderful wonderful like way to capture and celebrate and explore and document and it just i think it's amazing i people are gonna love it and people the, the early access information is that oh, yeah. available that's great that's, that's a available. good point i haven't quite launched that but and oh sorry no no that's <laughs> cool i'm gonna be launching that along with um, the winter season, so it's, it, we'll be wrapping uh, up in the studio. This is the end of the podcast. Next week, we'll have the end of the BTS. And the Academy is going to la be launching very shortly. And when it does, along with all the classes, there will be an opportunity to sign up for early access to the yearbook because we are only making 100 physical copies. You'll be able to buy the PDF, no problem, but there'll only be, the, for this time, the first time, 100 physical copies copies. So sign up for early notice and you're actually going to get a 48 hour window of opportunity to buy one of those. We, we, we're calling it the first 100. The first and uh, there'll be bonuses if you sign up ahead of time. There'll be special treats. So um, yeah, that, for sure, be sure to check that out. Always come over to opentothedoor.ca, join the studio, and then you'll, you'll get notice about everything. You won't miss out on a single thing. So speaking of noticing, is there anything in particular you've been noticing this season? Wow, well, how I said that felt like a trick question, like I know I the know. answer. <laughs> I don't know the answer. <laughs> I know, that's noticing. really interesting. So you're so good at that. Well, thank you. But I think that other than the transformation, I mean, that's really been, that's been the through line that's been so strong. Mm -hmm. I think also to this sort of sense of people wanting refuge um you know people wanting to be engaged in life and in the world but also to have a space where they can renew and refresh themselves where they can feel um safe and uh yeah and 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 just have a break Mm -hmm. some quiet, some peace, some time for themselves so that then they can get back into 
uh, really engaging strongly in the world. This is a part of what we need to do. This is, mm -hmm. you know, we need both quiet time and time to get out there in the world and do stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's another Shannon's most hated word. That's another place where we look for a balance. But by balance, I never, ever, ever mean 50-50. That, you know, that is just, I don't think that makes any sense at all. It's, it's what it is for you. You're constantly looking for what gives me the right feeling of aliveness and healthiness and vitality and excitement and engagement with life. And so playing around with how you structure your time is a part of finding that. Certainly, it's true. I'm still, I'm still searching for an alternate to balance because mm -hmm. it really does say it, but I resist that word. I like harmony a bit better. Harmony is um, good because it does mean that everything works beautifully together. Uh, but that's it's very unique. You know, when we yeah. think of a harmonious painting, harmonious colors, um, it can be a lot of different things. Because balance always feels to me like there's like some restrictions, like that there's a particularity in format or something, like you have the perfect ratio. And I'm like, it, to me, that feels unsustainable. And that's not the point of balance. I like harmony. I might adopt harmony. Feel free to take it. <laughs> so, something you said in there made me think of, um, oh yeah, I've seen a lot of people do like, um, um social media blackouts sort of like self-imposed that's not, like like vacations right from social media too being like all right be back in a bit just gonna go to my cave or <laughs> not a cave well some people but. really need to do it and part of it is uh, you know shannon you and i have talked about this is w when we let so here here's how i try to think about things like email or i don't mm -hmm. for example i don't refer to email i don't say i gotta i have to go do email or I have to go check my email, I say it's time for my correspondence. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is because it reminds me that there is another person on that this isn't about email. Email is just a connection, a connecting tool mm -hmm. between me and another person. And so is social media. But when we just we get in there and we well when we do it all the day, all the, all the time, it's like somebody tapping on your shoulder. Hey, 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 hey. And you're like, what, mm -hmm. what, what, what? Yeah, cool. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? You know, it's not very, it's, it's it frazzles your energy, no matter yeah. what it is, no matter how good it is. If it's great, you don't have time to actually appreciate it. And if it's tough, you don't have time to deal with it. Uh, and then it sits there unresponded to because you actually didn't have time to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes something you dread going back to or feel mm -hmm. if it's, I don't know why this is, if it's something bad, you dread going back to it. If it's something good, you feel like you don't have time to go back to it. It's so strange. <laughs> it is so strange. Yeah, I've been trying to work on that one too. I haven't quite found the right harmony, <laughs> <laughs> harmonious way of dealing with it. But I think it's, uh, sorry, go ahead. For me, it's been two, really two things. One is really being clear. This is a person. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I'm going to address that when I want, same as if I was in the room with the person. Mm -hmm. That's helped me. And then the other thing is I try to, I, I don't respond to things on the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. I really do, unless it's something really an emergency or whatever, but I try to stay away from it on the weekend so I can just be in my life for the weekend. I'm so available a lot of the other time I need some mm -hmm. of that. And also then I only do it a couple of times a day. I try not to check it all the time, all the time, all the time. You know, in the morning I take some solid time. I try to also respond in that moment. And when I find myself sort of leaving it, I decide that a, a real response that's timely is better than a perfectly crafted response later which mm -hmm. i used to try to do you know I, I people write me very um personal and beautiful things and so sometimes that can be overwhelming because i really want to sit down and you know i receive it truthfully in my heart everybody who's ever written to me please know like i receive it truthfully in my heart and i send love every single time uh, even if I don't send an email every single time. But now I'm trying to trust that what I can do in this moment will somehow transmit the love, the response. And so that's that's my strategy for right now. That's what I'm trying out. That's That sounds solid, man. That Thank you. Solid. I hope Mine's so. a lot less in-depth. 
<laughs> what are you doing? What's working for you? Well, I have like one thing I'm doing is that I feel like legitimately I ha- I am totally entitled to not answer right away. <laughs> like, right. I feel like if I'm if I'm too tired for the rest of the day, it can wait until tomorrow, and that is perfectly fine. Again, unless it's an emergency or whatever. Um, but yeah, that it does not require immediate action. And also I think for, for the new year, cause like I, I notice sometimes when I struggle with responding, the perfect response or the whatever response or what's too much information, what's enough information and you just sort of like circle, circle, circle. I think for the new year, I actually want to actively work on it as its own project. Like what does correspondence mean to me? Right. What do I want to say? Do I want to be clear? Do I want to be friendly? Do I, no, I'm never unfriendly at all. Well, <laughs> I guess there are some times. Like, like generally, like I know friendly is part of part of the package. But like, you know, like what do it like? What is it that I want? And then actually work on it because yeah. I feel like I've been floundering and um, and like for a while. So it's like okay, well, you know, be and, intentional. Yeah, yeah. So most specifically with email and, and like, like with that, and then also with other stuff to just try, like social media stuff, just to try stuff like just, you know, because that's also can be a fun way to engage, but it is way harder to turn off than than email. It can be like, you can stay on, you know, Twitter, or Instagram, kind of indefinitely. And sometimes it's like, okay, just close the program, just close the program, just close it down. <laughs> so yeah, so hopefully I want to take correspondence though as sort of like a bit of a project. Yes. I think that's such a, with it. a great thing that you're pointing out is that one, you get to decide for yourself and and it's allowed to change. You mm-hmm. can decide for yourself how you want to respond to these things. And because it's something we deal with on a regular basis, we kind of have to take it on as a project and try stuff mm-hmm. out and see like, is this going to work for me? How about I do this? How about I try that? Mm-hmm. You know, and I love like, you know, for me, one of the things I'm trying to do is respond more immediately. And one of the things you're trying to do is give yourself permission to not have to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think all of that is so powerful for me. It's the boundary of it not sticking with me all day. And for mm-hmm. you, it's the boundary of not taking over the time you need to do something different. Yeah. It's like the store is closed. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like it's not <laughs> like, you know, again, unless it's an emergency or, you know, there's, sure. there's that kind of stuff. Like, I think that's important too, but generally it's like, you know, hopefully there's some understanding that it's not immediate. So I just, for some reason, I want to say too, that even though (laughs) I I don't know that, um, you know, it's important to remember that there's people on the other side. I've certainly had it where somebody has written to me and they've been a grumpy pants about something. They like be like, and then I write back and I try to be helpful and I try to be kind and, you know, and I try to help. And uh, then they'll write back and go, oh my gosh, Jamie, I did, like, I had no idea that you would answer this yourself or I had no idea that, and I was like, yeah, that I'm a person. Like I'm just a person. (laughs) And even if it wasn't you answering yourself, it still goes to a person. person. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that's valid. And I think I like the idea of thinking of it as like connections, like thinking of it as that is someone else. That's an individual who's reached out or you're, you have reached out too, because the barrier of the internet and the barrier, like, I, you know, the can people can, you know, myself included, like you can get, you wouldn't say that in person or maybe you would, I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm not responding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, uh, just to get things a little lighter, <laughs> I'm just, I'm curious about what you've been enjoying this season, because fall is such a wonderful It is a wonderful here. season. You know what? The biggest thing this season for me was deciding to get outside for a walk every day and to couple that with listening to ebooks. This has been such a joy for me. I'm like exploding with it. Uh, it's just win, 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 win. Like for those of you who've done planning day and we talk about focus group, uh, focus um, areas, and then how we can have certain activities that, that tick many boxes. Mm. This would be one for me. I love reading and I never get time to do it anymore. It's one of the reasons why the Creative Living Bookshelf, which was such a popular series, sort of fell off the radar this year. Uh, and that was because I just haven't had the time to read. Uh, and then I found that I was working so hard. My Fitbit told the truth 
that I often wasn't getting up or walking or <laughs> leaving the house, you know, and I thought, well, let's just get some books and, um, get outside and I, and I get to carry my camera too. So it's like, I'm listening <laughs> wow. to the brilliance of Brene Brown while enjoying the crisp fall weather while snapping pictures of red maple leaves. I mean, it is like a Bella Grace moment, you know, it is a Stampington magazine moment. It is so, it's living the dream. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I, the dream. I love it. It is one of my favorite new things that I've done for a very long time. Time. And we'll see how I feel when it is a Toronto winter and mm. the wind is blowing and it's minus 12. And I do have to say, I do have snow pants, mm. so there's no excuse. <laughs> we will have to check it. I'll just make a note at the end of the winter yes, season. Yes, yeah, at the end of winter season. <laughs> next finale. Did I keep it up? I, there may not be as many pictures, mind you. Uh, yeah. but like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I, it's been really good for me and I've enjoyed wonderful, wonderful books. The Brené Brown, uh, oh my gosh, how can the name be escaping me right it's now? It's really long. Braving the, the Wilderness. wilderness. Braving the Wilderness. Yeah. So Braving the Wilderness. And then uh, Carrie Smith's Wanderer Society. I have loved that. And right now I'm actually listening to, and I have to say this is the best book so far that I found on aging, even though it's hmm. not... Um, it's not from a woman's perspective, is Thomas Moore's Ageless Soul. And it's just, I'm really enjoying it. He's, he's got a lovely presence and um, a really different perspective and, and really talking very directly about aging. And so I'm really enjoying that too. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like that's one th topic that, what's that, Janet? I didn't, I didn't heard about that one yet. <laughs> it's new. Yes, it's new. I just started listening to it. Uh, uh, and so that will be, I listened to Steve Martin's autobiography. Wow. Oh my gosh. And you, I, like, I feel like Neil it's, Gaiman's from the right. He's, now that is a joy. If you, I mean, he is just has a wonderful presence. His voice is wonderful. And he's talking about the love of libraries and books. It's, I mean, that's just wonderful. And I do, uh, you can tell even by the examples I've given, I have seem to have a strong preference for listening to books that are read by the author. Uh, and or I, I thought you were going to go with nonfiction. <laughs> oh yes, and nonfiction too. Not it has not been a fiction book in there. Nope. Yeah, no, and that's that's been. Uh, I get so many nonfiction recommendations for you, and I got to say, I am really excited. I have to be very selfishly. I am very excited about you reading like so much because then I get recommendations, and <laughs> and I don't I don't read I read I read I read a fair amount of nonfiction. But um, it's always nice to get recommendations. I actually did a tag recently where one of the questions was something about recommendations. And I was like, people actually don't give me recommendations. Oh, <laughs> so well, good. I am happy to. Thank you. So thank you for that. Uh, so, well, we'll see if this no pants happens. So, but <laughs> I thought you said no pants. I'm like, <laughs> no pants. I'm going, oh, no pants. <laughs> That's a whole different podcast. That's, That's a, a whole, whole different, different story. <laughs> uh, but speaking of transitioning, I was curious as to how you transition from fall to winter as we're now in the land of December and have seen glimmers of yes and ow yes we have there have been dustings you know what it's so funny I love that you're asking that today because I actually today I was starting to do that getting ready the clearly for me a lot starts in my work right so i'm getting the academy ready for winter so all the classes in the studio ready for winter but that also means like well what's the look of winter this year and so to this morning i was pulling out all my winter companions you know so this fall i had a beautiful owl he's over here oh come on owl where are you there he is yeah. so i had my owl and um and then I sort of have to, and I have a certain candle, the Wick Witch candle, Harvest Moon, that I always light for Journal Club, and it smells like fall. And so then winter, I start to put all those things away, and then I pull out, you know, penguins and <laughs> polar bears and stags. I love stags, so there will be many, many stags on my desk. Uh, and also, too, I really do enjoy. Um, 
I haven't quite this time got around to what would traditionally be called a capsule wardrobe, mm -hmm. but it really does help to make this conscious decision of here are the clothes that I'm going to work with this season. I'm going to put everything else away. I'm going to get rid of what I no longer uh, wear. And that's, a, I like that transition too. It makes it feel like a fresh start. It makes it feel beautiful. I'm not just decorating for the holidays. I'm decorating for the season. Um, in the yearbook, you know, when we get to the new season, because the yearbook is seasonal. So mm -hmm. I am almost finished the fall one and then I'll need to print up a winter one. And then I get, just get started. I get, it's very exciting <laughs> to start the season so that the first day of winter, you actually have something to do. Like I know a lot of us want to honor the season and then it gets to the first day and you're like, what do I do? I'm like, well, I sit there and I go, Ooh, what do I love about winter? What do I want to do this winter? What are the pictures? Like, what am I going to put in here that looks wintry? What are the colors? I'm gonna use? And, and that's just for me, I feel like a kid with a kid's activity book, you know? Um, but that it ties into that deep feeling of starting fresh, that every season is a fresh and beautiful start with its own unique personality. And so it's like seeing an old friend, you know, and I've been really trying last year, I specifically started to really work on avoiding all the downness that people get. I know people have seasonal affective disorder. I know there are chemical, physical things that happen when the sun isn't around. So I'm not talking about um, not accepting that that's a thing. But what I've started to do is say, okay, yeah, it is darker. So what's cool about the dark? Mm -hmm. You know, candles are cool about the dark. Twinkie lights are even more amazing in the dark. Cozy slippers and throws. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You reading books, watching movies, hot chocolate. Like there's so much to really enjoy. I'm not a big, I'm not going to go skiing and skating. I'm not a big outdoorsy winter girl, <laughs> but there is plenty to look forward to and enjoy right here this season. That's awesome. I think it's really wonderful to embrace the season. And also, I love the idea of like, like the um, transitioning your like animals, your menagerie, yes. <laughs> like, like the studio menagerie. Like that's just so wonderful to, because, and the, I find that with the capsule wardrobe even too, is that when you put things away, you get to really like go, oh, I love that sweater. Oh yeah, those pants, they look so good. Or, yes. you know, I even do that with my dishes and that's just because I only, because I'm short, I can just reach comfortably the bottom row. Yeah. And so I rotate out my, my dishes seasonally because why not? Because I guess, you know, like, so I got it, still have to do that. So. I think it's, you know, a, a creative person too. It's like, we love color and yeah. stuff. We love texture yeah. and the seasons offer that. So it is yes. a really nice thing to pull out that cozy, dark red mug or whatever it is and get your dark plates. And, and then in the summer and spring, have your picnic plates. That's what I think if you're orange. Oh plaid ones, you know? I almost always have those because they're really light. <laughs> they're easy to clean. So. I think it's a beautiful, I think it's, um, we all get a little stressed about time moving forward. Mm. If we enjoy each of the seasons, it actually will always give us something to look forward to. Always. Mm -hmm. Because you can be in any situation almost and still enjoy the feel, the touch, the essence of the season. Mm -hmm. mm. Is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to? My birthday. My birthday. Oh yeah, <laughs> birthday, birthday. Jamie's birthday's coming up. Yes, it's my birthday this week. And uh, of course, Jess and I, we have a tradition of always taking off each other's birthday. So that is gonna be wonderful. We'll get the whole day together. And then I'm having some friends over for a journal jam on Friday night. And that is gonna be a real treat. And we're getting some great food. And we're actually gonna, for journal jam, we usually just work with, um, dry mediums because mm -hmm. it's easier. It's not so messy. The table can be covered with colored pencils and markers. And, but this time we're going to pull out the paints mm -hmm. and we're just going to see what magic happens. And we're going to even get some potatoes and make potato prints. And I, I, who knows what's going to happen, but I am deeply, deeply looking forward to that. 
I'm so excited to do potato prints. I don't think I've done that since I was a kid. I think it's going to be so I know. You, you think I was having a 10-year-old birthday party, but th- that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think that is totally awesome. It's your birthday. My, my thing with birthdays is, is whatever goes. The birthday person... They get yeah. whatever they want. It's their day. So. And speaking of that, Shannon, I hope that maybe one day this winter we could, it, it somehow it made it onto my winter list. Uh, for my birthday, a couple of years ago, we went five pin bowling. <gasps> Let's do that again this winter. Yes. Yay. Yes. I would love to do five pin bowling again. Yeah. That was so funny. We it made up nicknames for each other. It was, <laughs> it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was so I, fun. And there's lots of cool things happening in Toronto that, you know, I really try to get out and do things. You know, I sing at choir, choir, choir uh, as much as I can weekly. And Shannon, you and I are going to their big mm-hmm. Christmas event together. And we're yes. so looking forward to that. Um, the Chris, Christian Dior exhibit is coming to or is now at the Royal Ontario Museum. So getting out to see that. Uh, one of my favorite things I did for myself last year was buy myself a membership to the Art Gallery of Ontario, and I bought uh, a plus one membership so I can always bring a friend, and that has been an utter delight to me. It's made me really make an effort to get to the Art Gallery, which is one of my favorite places in the city. I could go there all the time and just be happy, and I can invite somebody. I can bring a friend and say, hey, do you want to see the George O'Keefe exhibit, which I saw three times, you know, Uh, four times. uh, you know and what an amazing experience to be able to see my own reaction to the work so this is how I respond to it and then this is how my friend responds to it this is how my other friend responds to it and that what a great way to get to know a friend better Mm. too and to see what do they notice what do they see what is significant to them what do they take away from this exhibit it helps me see the art fresh and differently and deeper and it helps me see my my friends and loved ones fresh and deeper too that's so wonderful and it's such a generous uh like thing to do like and i know that i have really enjoyed going to the ago together and getting to see some art and hang out together and just it's been really wonderful. So well, my really membership's exciting. good for another year, so I know we'll go see more. <laughs> Yay! I like that. I like that. Speaking of things that happen yearly, we had our fourth planning day this year in the studio. I can't, I, I can't quite believe, because, well, me and Jamie started doing it before. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't even know that math. We don't need to do that math. But fourth <laughs> year of planning day this year. How, what was it like for you? Four years. Wow. I know that's still amazing to me. And what's amazing to me is how many people have been there at least since the, like many, many people seem to have been there three times. Mm-hmm. And that's just really exciting because, you know, we do it every year, Shannon, like you said, for more years than we're going to try to remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's exciting to me to see that, it's really helpful to other people to yes. do that every year. And I remember, you know, cause we would do it and I would share pictures and I would say, this is what we're doing. And everybody would be going, what is that thing planning day? You know, <laughs> how can I be a part of it? I want to try it too. And I remember thinking, oh, this just isn't possible to do in that format because you know, we spread out, we take lots of time. We, you know, and then I, but it really gave me the motivation to try to articulate what is it we actually do? What does it mean? How do we do it? Because you and I, we've been working together on stuff forever. Yeah, literally. Like, you know, <laughs> literally since you were walking. <laughs> like, I just always think about you helping me make dinner, you know? Yeah. And so, like, that's the beginning of us working together, I think. And um, just a short while ago. And, <laughs> So it was good to articulate it and then to be able to share it with people. And Mm -hmm. it's such a powerful process. And I have had, I've just had some really wonderful emails from people saying that it's become a part of their life and that it's become a part of how they experience their to-dos seasonally, uh, with intention, with consciousness about what they really do want, not just filling up the schedule with to-dos. And Mm -hmm. It's fun to do it together. I think that's the other thing is planning day gives you a structure. If you do it live or or with the recording, because there is a beginning, there is a middle, and there is an end. Mm -hmm. And so 
often we make a plan. I'm going to do my planning. It goes on forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so this is a way it's going to change. It's going to morph. It's going to adjust. It's as I always say, it's an, or, you know, we are organic beings living an organic life. So your plan should be organic too, but this gives you a chance to sort of, you know, put your stake in the ground and say, this is what I want. And here's how I'm going to make that a part of my life next year. Yeah. It's really powerful. It's really powerful. And it's so, for me, actually, I find it, speaking of the, like, you know, the, the moon, I find it comforting, you know, to know that these are active choices. Yes. You know, like, this is, you know, what I, what I actually want to do. I love looking back and seeing, a, like, a checked off to-dos and stuff like that, too. But it's like, yeah, this is what I wanted to do, and I did it, you know, or I got further, or I did, like, you know, I brought this into my life. I, like, that yeah so it's powerful. so empowering right yeah you yeah can say you know last year i decided that i was going to finally um let's say uh finally i was going to give myself some time every week to write i've been saying it for years but this year i'm actually going to do it mm -hmm. for this year i'm gonna it, it matters to me to get to the art gallery so i'm gonna buy myself a membership and i'm gonna mm -hmm. make sure i go at least once a season and then you work that in uh, and it can be hard, you know, it's one of the things we talk about in planning day and it's one of the things that I see with my clients. It's one of the, that when we start something, we're so excited because we want, we love connecting with our desire. We love connecting with who we are. And then we take that moment where we go, oh, but that's actually not reflected in my life. Like, mm -hmm. here's what I want and here's who I am. And here's how far I feel from that. In this moment, I'm seeing this huge distance between me and my desires. And that's painful. Mm -hmm. It's so painful. But it's exactly that that wakes you up to your life. That wakes you up to, yes, it is painful. Don't feel this way at the end of next year or the year yeah. after or at the end of your life. Don't go back and say, man, I always wanted to, but I never. Mm -hmm. You know, and that I don't, and I, I just feel like it's important to say about that. It doesn't, I think it's important not to mean that mm, tied into specifics and regret. Like I never published a book. Oh, mm. you know, I feel regret about that. You, that's something we may have, we don't have full control over, yeah. but did you write? Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy the experience of writing? Did you show up to your desire and hand your heart over to it? Did you give your schedule to the dreams that were in your heart? I think that's the, that's the part that gives us a sense of integrity. You know, it gives us a sense of strength and empowerment. And as we feel ourselves moving towards it, then we get more and more and more joy, more and more and more freedom, more and more and more ourselves and ease and laughter, you know, and we start to recognize, actually, I can make choices every day, every day. Mm -hmm. that bring me closer to what I want. I always think about how the choices we make today are the life we're living two years from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned that in my business because I could definitely, I would feel like what I was doing now, why weren't the results right next to it? You know, because it takes longer for a seed to grow. Right. And so what I could look back probably 18 months and that would be like, oh yeah, yeah, no, now that's <laughs> so it's so plant like, those seeds. Yep. Make the and don't get discouraged. Don't get no. discouraged. Keep making the choices that feel right in your heart that are have put you in alignment with what you want, that mm. feel like integrity. Uh you you really can't when you feel in integrity with yourself, you're on solid ground. Yeah. Yeah. And that seed might be there and not sprouted yet. And it's just waiting. It's and just then waiting. one day it'll be there. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Apparently I'm not, I don't have a green thumb, so, but I know it's true. I know it's true. I do. I do. I do. Oh my gosh. Well, that like, I was going to say something else about planning day. Oh, I wanted to, of course, mention to people that planning day is still available at the Academy, right? Right, Jane? Yes, thanks right? for that, Shannon. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, you can, even though, the, sorry. Yep, you can participate with the recording. So the live portion is gone, but you can uh, participate by signing up for the recording and you'll have access to it like this. Like this. There will be snapping. There, there will be snapping. snapping. 
Woo, snap, snap, snap. <laughs> Well, that looks like we've planned it. We worked on the planning of the year, like individually. But what can we look forward to the year at the studio? What's 2018 going to look like, as far as you can tell us? Yes, lab. In this, yes, I'm sitting in the secret lab, like. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> well, I really think the big things uh, for the new year are things I've mentioned already. So, Journal Club will be back in January. Mm -hmm. So, if you have been waiting to take part in that, please join us this season. We're going to have a magical time together. And then the yearbook. And the yearbook is such a big project that it is really the main focus for the studio next year. And I just, I cannot wait to share it. And I hope people will love it. I think they will. I hope so. I know I do. Good. Yay. I love to, like now I've been doing it for a year. So I actually have like four like my four copies of a year so I can have pull out spring, you know, summer, fall and winter. I love that. And they all look different and they all, you know, that's one of the things about the yearbook. It is just, it is a black and white journal. It is open for you to make it your own. Everybody, this is my favorite thing about it. I think is that it has a structure and it's this clean open space. And as people, you know, live with it for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, it will look so like them and their lives that no two will look anything like each other. Mm -hmm. And that's just my favorite. I'm so looking forward to, my dream is to see people's flip throughs of their yearbook because I can't wait to see their lives in their studios. Ah, uh, see, that is a seed that you're planting. Planting it now. Now. Flip through drip water. <laughs> yes, exactly. So exciting. I hope we'll be celebrating that at the next season finale. Mm -hmm. Me too. I'll make a note to ask you <laughs> at, at, at the next season finale. Wow. Well, it's been a really exciting season, and I am, had so much fun in the studio, and Yay. I can't wait until 2018. I guess like just, the, yeah, me too. I'm really excited. And one thing that really has seen a lot of change in the studio has been this podcast. Mm. So I love thinking about that and celebrating that as we wrap up our season finale, you know, that. The one question I forgot to ask. <laughs> what would you like to celebrate, Jamie? Oh, celebrate. <laughs> Oh, that's always my favorite question. You know, I, I definitely, I want to celebrate this season that I um, did my meditation instructor training. I definitely want to do that. I want to celebrate that it took some real bravery to change the um, content and structure of the podcast. That was a big move uh, from doing interviews every week to turning it into a much more intimate experience where I'm really talking to the listener. Uh, the feedback has been awesome and I have loved it. I have to say, I still see people. I always said to people that the people I ask to interview are people I see sparkle, like I see a sparkle around them and then I ask and I'm still seeing that all the time. So I, I, I'm sure we will have some people on the guest sometimes to talk, but I have really, um, appreciated going deeper and sharing my own personal story, my own creative path, my own creative journey. And I really think that's laying the seeds for some vulnerable, but wonderful work next year. It's certainly helping me think about the book or books that I want to write. And that for sure is a part of what I intend for 2018 is a lot more writing. Uh, and I, f I feel it calling me. And so I, I must answer. So writing calling me, I guess I'm celebrating that a little bit. Uh, I'm celebrating Journal Club and Planning Day, uh, which were so much fun this year. I'm celebrating that we've come so far in the studio that we're still here. Uh, we've been podcasting for a long time. We've been vlogging now for a long time, e-courses, coaching. I think I just I think I've been coaching for 10 years. Wow. Yeah, which Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, which is amazing to me and I really want to celebrate all of my clients, you know, people who have come to work with me one on one and have shown up with enthusiasm and fire and tenderness and vulnerability and turn that all into 
creating a life that is just what they're aching for and that you know finally getting to their creative practice finally understanding that they are creatives and artists and um, that's very meaningful to me so I look forward to more of all of this next year lots of celebrations lots of inspiration lots of connection mm -hmm. um, and lots of twinkie lights I keep looking at my twinkie lights <laughs> um, lots of sparkle sparkle it is sparkle it is well I think that brings us to the finale of the finale thank you Shannon I feel like because you've been a part of the studio since the beginning since the pre pre beginning in the early days before we knew it was the studio I just feel like I have a constant celebration buddy you know I have a uh, tech sergeant Shannon I've got like that person who gets it always and that has helped me so much and I know especially at journal club that people really feel your presence and and that you are that friendly person in the chat room making sure everybody feels welcome and understands what's going on and and didn't miss the last prompt and, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that your presence in the studio is an important and magical one so thank you oh thanks Jamie so I'm happy to be here yay well, thank you everybody listening for being here. Thank you, Shannon, for, you know, um, turning the tables on me as we always do on the <laughs> finale. And thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thanks for being a part of the podcast. And I really mean that, you know, when you listen to the show, when you share the show, when you give it a thumbs up, when you, you know, share it with your friends, you are a part of this. When you engage in the conversation, when I... Like, I just feel energetically that that moment when I say something and you agree with it or you don't agree with it and you grab your journal and you start working it out or you ask somebody else, what do you think about this? That's what it's all about for me is, is passing the magic of these creative conversations saying that this matters, that mm -hmm. our artistic creative energy matters. It is worthy of engagement. It is worthy of our time. It is worthy of our sharing. Uh, so thank you for being a part of it for another year here at Creative Living with Jamie, a year of transition and change, mm -hmm. uh, which I seem to have been naming it. And I am excited to see what magic we get up to, what adventures we go on next year. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate our time together. Come on over and visit me at Jamie Riddler Studios. The easiest way to find your way there is openthedoor.ca. I look forward to seeing you there.